Good evening, class of 2020, family, friends, and guests, and anyone else who might be with us this evening. Welcome to our 2020 baccalaureate worship. We're grateful that you're here. Uh, it's good to be here with you for a time of worship and prayer and thanksgiving and praise to God. Um, my name is Steve Lindley. I'm the pastor at American Lutheran Church here in Ashland, and I am glad to be here with you tonight. Uh, so tonight we're going to just have some time of um, worship and praise and prayer, some time of testimony, um, some time of song, and I am grateful to be here with you for this um, awesome evening. And so uh, I just want to open us up with a prayer as we begin our worship tonight. So let us pray. Awesome God, um, we give you thanks, Lord, first and foremost, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your grace and mercy and love that you pour out on each one of us every day. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us, um, a day of promise and hope, a, uh, a day that is a gift from you. And Lord, we give you thanks for um, each one of the graduates uh, who we celebrate tonight. We thank you for the ways that you have been at work in their lives. We thank you for your presence with them. We thank you for your blessings upon them. And we ask, Lord, now that you be with us as we worship. We ask that you would pour out your spirit on each of us, that you would open our hearts and our minds to you, to your word, to your presence. Please bless this time, Lord, and be with each one of us. And we pray all this in the name of your Son. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. I chose this verse because right now there is such uncertainty in the world, and knowing that God has a plan for us gives us hope and can help us keep pushing forward. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, Joshua 1, 9. And this verse just shows that God is with you wherever you go and wherever you decide to go in the future, so don't be afraid. the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. Hope will 
it louder In the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder In the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. Oh, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it will give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. I chose this verse because when us seniors go out into the real world, um, we need to not be scared to show our light and not live in fear and hopefully people can see how good we're doing and follow us because we follow Jesus. Hi, my name is Blake Cobbs and today I'm going to share my testimony. Um, I grew up in a Lutheran church in town. Um, growing up, it wasn't something very important to me. Um, I was young and to me church was just something we went to. Um, you know, we would go there, we'd sing, I'd get cookies sometimes, you know. It just was not anything that really uh, struck my heart. So over time, we stopped going, and I never really questioned it. So early on, going into middle school and high school, uh, Jesus was not a big part of my life. Um, going into my freshman year, the summer before freshman year, Micah Judds invited me to go to a Bible camp called Maranatha. And uh, he told me all about it. He said it was super fun. And I was just excited to go so I could hang out with him and do all these fun activities out there. And uh, I convinced my mom to go. And we went out there. It was really far away. It was just south of North Platte. And I got there. And I was expecting just to have fun and mess around the whole time. And then we started uh, talking. And uh, we had speakers. And we started worshiping and everything. And the message started coming out to me a lot more. And uh, I started asking questions to our leaders. And uh, I'm starting to realize that uh, th this thing was pretty cool and uh, I should get to know this a little bit more. I dove into the word there and it was just a super awesome experience. And uh, towards the end of it, um, in our room we had a, we were like the oldest cabin in, the, in our area. And uh, we were mostly ninth graders or older, but we had one kid, his name, uh, he was a sixth grader and his name was Vlad. And he was from Ukraine. And he was the funniest kid, despite being the youngest, he was hilarious. And uh, this was really his first time ever getting to know Christ. Uh, even though he was younger than me, 
And this was also my first time really getting to know Christ. And uh, he decided he wanted to get baptized there. And, um, well, I had been baptized when I was younger, but I was so young, I don't remember at all. And uh, the point of baptism was to be reborn. And I thought that something just struck my heart. And I thought, I, I need to do this because this is time I need to be reborn with Christ. And that night, me and him and a few other kids ended up getting baptized in that lake there. And uh, that was my first step in just at least getting it into my mind and recognizing that Christ needed to be something important in my life. But going into freshman year, um, everything, you know, first year of high school, there's so much thrown at you and you really don't know what's going on. Um, so you, you're really busy and I really never filed in time for Christ. So uh, it was just something I had in the back of my head and um, I never really acted on it. And uh, that just led into my sophomore year. Um, so many things I enjoyed throughout high school. Um, I started disliking football. I almost quit football my sophomore year. Um, I hated school. Uh, even hanging out with friends was not very fun. Um, for, for three, four months there, I had awful anxiety. I had panic attacks about every night. Um, for that time, I had insomnia. I don't know if I got a full night of sleep for months. Um, I was just in the worst depression I've ever been in. Um, and I was just asking God why. I didn't understand at all. I didn't know it, it was gonna make me grow as a person. And I was just starting to hate God, honestly. Um, I, I just didn't understand why I had to go through it. But um, over time, I uh, was able to grab a hold of it, and I really grew as a person there, and it kind of formed me into the person I am today. Um, taking that, um, I decided not to quit football. Um, you know, I made it something really important to me. I thought, you know, if I'm going to give it up, I need to give it one last year and uh, really give it all, my all. So that summer, I put a lot of work in, and uh, I got a lot stronger. I got really close with some guys I'd never been close to before and uh, made a lot of friends. And football was something super important to me. And uh, that leads into uh, during the season, um, on Wednesdays, we'd always get off early for FCA. And my freshman and sophomore year, I never went. I just thought it wasn't something for me. I, I thought I wasn't going to fit in or anything. but. One Wednesday, some of the football guys invited me to go, and uh, I thought, you know, this would be a chance to hang out with these guys. Uh, I'm gonna get a free meal. Um, I thought it was gonna be, you know, I might as well just try it out. And over time, at first it was just the meal and hanging out with friends and everything. And over time, it, the messages from the leaders uh, just really started hitting me. And I started realizing that you know, this isn't something beyond me. This, this is something I can take into my own life and apply it and make my life better. And I started doing that and it started making me a lot happier. And uh, I was able to persevere through more things and uh, get a lot better in my life. And then um, continuing going to FCA, uh, one day that spring, one Wednesday, um, Barry showed us a video um, it was a video about a car crash, a few friends, and uh, uh, some of them passed away, and uh, some of them hadn't been saved yet, so uh, they hadn't received the gift of Christ, so they weren't able to go on to heaven, and um, that video just hit me like a brick wall. Um, it was definitely my wake-up call. Um, and it was right then and there that it really resonated with me and I realized that I needed to make a change. And that day, uh, I finally accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. And um, it's, it's hard to describe my feeling. I remember driving to Anomaly right after FCA. Uh, my eyes were full of tears. I was crying like a big baby, but I still had the biggest smile on my face. Um, just everything felt so much more brighter. The light around me was brighter. The colors were more vibrant, and I was just filled with an indescribable joy. It, it's hard to truly explain how I felt in words. So uh, 
that day really just changed me. Um, and using that, uh, I was able to get over a lot of other things. Um, one tough thing was football ending uh, this fall. Uh, our season ended a lot quicker than we thought it would. Uh, we got kicked out in the quarterfinals, and uh, I b truly believe that was part of God's plan. If uh, we had not lost that game, um, I wouldn't have been able to get a lot of my college applications and uh, scholarship applications in. And one school that was really important that if I didn't, if it didn't end there, I wouldn't have gone on would have been Wayne State. Um, coincidentally enough, that's where we lost our final game on Wayne State's field. And over the next few months, I really wanted to go to UNL, and God just kept telling me, no, you don't have enough scholarship money, uh, you're not going to enjoy it to this other college, you, you need to go to Wayne. I got scholarship money, I got a program, and I just kept getting pushed to Wayne. So I finally decided that I needed to follow God's plan and uh, follow him to Wayne. And uh, that gave me a sense of peace over football ending, and it gave me a sense of peace for my future. Um, and it continues into uh, this current situation. Um, you know, it's tough. We're all away from all the people we love. And um, God has really uh, allowed me to recognize the things I'm blessed with. Um, you know, all these things are taken away from us, and I was finally able to recognize, wow, I was so blessed before this. But even after it, with all those other things taken away, I was able to recognize the things I'm still blessed with, with my family, and my home, food, and I could just go on and on and on about all the things I'm blessed with. Um, you know, this quarantine has given me a, a way to get through the excuse of reading my Bible. Now I have all this time, and every day I sit down and read at least a chapter a day. Um, and I could just keep going on and on about all the things uh, and lessons he has taught me through these struggles. But um, ultimately, uh, the last thing I just have to say is uh, Jesus Christ is the game changer in my life, and uh, I'm forever thankful for that. Uh, thank you for listening to my testimony.
no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. It's no shadow you won't climb up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. It's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. It's no shadow. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. To me, that just means that during this difficult time, I can find strength in God, and it is through him that we are fulfilled and we have what we want and what we need. And so just stay strong during this difficult time and we will persevere through. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. This verse resonates with me because the Lord promises us gifts of eternal life if we follow his lead. Give me something brighter, give me something I can see. Give me something big, just give me something I can be. i 
Well, good evening, everybody. My name is James Berkston. I'm the youth pastor at Riverview Community Church. Uh, but I'm also uh, the father of Gavin Berkston, one of our 2020 graduates. And so that is really why I have the pleasure, honor of being able to, to share this message with you. And I just want you to know that I've been praying for um, your hearts and for your um, ability to just hear these as God words, not mine, but God speaking through me, because I believe he has something incredibly special for each and every one of you. And so let's just dive right in. I've got a story I want to tell you. A couple weeks ago, I came walking out of my um, house, out of my basement door. Um, we have a walkout basement, so I was underneath a deck, and I came walking out, and I heard, cheep, 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 cheep. And so I decided to investigate, and I took a couple steps to my right, and I looked up in the under part of the deck, and what I saw was a nest, pretty good-sized nest. And so I resisted the temptation. I wanted it so bad. I resisted the temptation of grabbing a ladder and going and looking, um, but I knew that there were little baby birds. I don't know if there was one or 15. I didn't know how many there were, but I knew there were some baby birds there. And so fast forward to yesterday. I came walking out of that same door, and I stood there for 5, 10, 15 like 30 seconds I stood there um, listening for the cheeps and never heard a single one. There wasn't a single cheep, 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 cheep. And so I realized that at some point in those two weeks, those baby birds had left the nest. At some point in those two weeks, the mama bird had, had kicked, kicked, kicked the baby birds out of the nest. They were no longer there. And then uh, I started doing some research and I realized... Uh, that, that's a lie. Like mama birds don't actually kick baby birds out of the nest. You know, like baby birds when they're little, little, tiny, small, just like the, the, the little, tiny, little things. They just kind of sit there with their mouths open and their mom brings food back and feeds them right there in the nest. But as they get bigger, it's, it's an instinctual thing in a mother to, to know, man, my babies can't stay here. We got, we got to get them out. And so what she'll do is that instead of bringing the food all the way into the nest, she'll bring it close to the nest and make the baby birds come out of the nest for their food. And over the course of days, she'll get further and further away, and these baby birds will learn that they've got something going on here, that they don't just need to stay right here. And so the mother, the question that I have for, for you guys is why? Why would the mother do this? Why would the mother bring the baby birds out of the nest? Is it because she's thinking to herself, oh man, I cannot feed all these birds. It's too much food as they get bigger. They just eat more and more and more. Or is it that she's like, they're getting bigger and, and pretty soon they're going to grow out of the nest. They're going to knock the nest to the ground. Is that why? And again, as I researched, what I realized, there are two things at play. The first is, the safest place for a baby bird isn't in the nest. It's out there, surviving on its own. When a baby bird is here in the nest, it is just there for any predator, whether it be another larger bird or a snake or some sort of a rodent. These baby birds sitting there, they are just, they are there for the taking. And so it is not safe. The mother bird is loving and carrying her baby birds as she's trying to move them out of the nest. But it's bigger than safety. The best life for a bird isn't in the nest, it's out there. Man, I, I've had times where I've been driving in my car or riding my bike or walking or whatever, just existing outside, and I've looked up in the sky and I've seen a bird flying, and I've thought to myself, man, I would give anything to be flying like a bird. I would give anything to have the ability to do that. I've never looked at a bunch of chicks in, in a nest and thought to myself, oh, wouldn't it be so great if I could just, just, no. The best life is like this. It's living with our wings outstretched, soaring like eagles. Interestingly enough, that brings me to one of the verses that got shared tonight, this, the verse that Justin shared. Isaiah 40, 31. It's this, it says, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They'll find strength if they what? trust in the Lord. And if they trust in the Lord, they'll find strength, and that strength will, they will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. If we trust in God, he will give us strength, and when we have strength, we will soar like eagles. What an incredible life. This idea that the best life isn't in the nest, it's out there but it's not just like out there, it's out there with 
him out there with God where God is giving you everything that you need for any given moment of your life. As much as I would like to keep my son Gavin, as much as our parents, your parents would like to keep you here where we can control some things, we recognize that the best life is, the best life's out there. The best life is out there with God. And so another verse I want to share with you guys today is Deuteronomy 31.6. It says, be strong and courageous. Be strong! Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. What is them? Don't be afraid or terrified because of them. Them is the world. Them is culture. Them is the temptations that are out there. Don't be afraid of those temptations. Don't be afraid of the world. Don't be afraid of culture. Here's the reason why. Because the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. No matter what your life looks like, no matter what your next day holds, you can trust that God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He goes with you. And if you will live your life with him, trusting him, like I said, like an eagle soaring, We want you guys to know that we love you, that we care about you, and that we have had an incredible honor watching you live your life here, but that we are ready to send you out with him into whatever the life is that he would have for you. A life like this. A life like this. It's the best life. It's the best life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to pray for all of our seniors um, as, they, as they move out of the nest and they go out. I pray that they would trust you, that they would know that you will never leave them, that you'll never forsake them, and that when they think about their lives, they would recognize that in you they can soar like, like eagles. They can soar like eagles. God, I pray that you would be very, very, very near to them wherever it is that they're going, that they would know that you are with them that you are with them. And God, I pray that you would give them great friends wherever it is that they go. I pray that you would bring people alongside them who will be able to encourage them in their faith to take steps closer to you and not away from you. And God, I pray that they would know that no matter where their life takes them, that we are back here praying for them, supporting them. I pray that they would know that no matter what, that we are available to help them. And God, even though we can't go with them, we know that you do. So we trust you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I just want to say congratulations. 13 years of school, 13 years of studying. You all have a diploma. Your name is on it. That diploma is signed. And nobody can take that away from you. Congratulations. Have an awesome Tuesday. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome summer. Hope to see all of you. And, and, and I pray that our lives can get back to normal. Um, have a great night.